Hi, my name is Jessica Espinoza, and I am the Public Sector Partner Marketing Manager here at AWS. I'm here today with Chris Connolly from uh, Slalom. He's a senior director. Um, welcome, Chris. Hey, thanks a lot. Nice to be here. Wonderful. Um, Chris, um, uh, what are some of the common challenges that you're seeing within um, some of the public sector uh, um, organizations in modernizing their contact sector? Um, Jessica, I think um, it kind of breaks up into three big areas. Um, the, the first is that there's a retiring workforce. Uh, there, are, there are fewer workers to support the same or growing populations. And in most states right now, there's there's little political will to really invest in hiring kind of large public sector workforces. Um, local governments are spending money, but they're, they're not spending it on hiring hundreds and hundreds of people. Um, the second is that uh, legacy on-premises solutions just aren't really scaling that well. Um, with, with all the best intentions in the world, uh, they're mostly optimized for kind of typical volumes. And they're, they're optimized to take up to, you know, to scale to the largest expected volumes. The, the problem is that when catastrophes hit, you know, like when people really need help, uh, the rules of normal kind of go out the window. And so, you, you know, you can't just look at what happened in the last five or 10 years and say, well, what was, what was the largest volume that we handled then? We'll just build to, to that. Um, mm -hmm. you know, as, as more and more disruptors kind of come into play, you have to think of in terms of once in a generation crises, because I mean, that's when people really need those services. And, and then the last thing is that a lot of legacy solutions kind of assume that everyone's in a fixed location. Um, a lot of them have ways of working around that. You can build it into, you can build a distributed contact center with them, but it's just a lot harder from a technical perspective. And so what do you do when a catastrophe does hit? Well, the need for government services actually increases, but suddenly you don't have enough people. Uh, your system isn't scaling. And then, of course, government isn't sometimes less available to go to the office in the middle of a catastrophe. And just look at you know, Germany, for example, in the last month, with all the flooding they've had there, it is harder for people to actually go to an office. And in, in some ways, it's actually easier for government to provide services if they are able to disperse the actual people providing those services. So kind of those, those three big things, you know, the, the workforce itself is, is shrinking, the solutions don't really scale, and then they're all kind of assuming that you're on-premises. Uh, you know, along with, you know, co-located with the technology. Um, those are some real challenges that, that we're seeing in public sector right now. Um, can you share with us uh, a recent example of a public sector customer that has chosen to modernize and um, some of the challenges that you may have seen and some of the, and, and how did modernizing impact them um, with their constituents? Yeah, I'll, I'll give you an example with a, um, a State Department of Labor. Uh, so last year, kind of at the, the start of COVID, um, one of our clients had something like five years worth of claims volume come in in the span of you know two weeks. Um, mm -hmm. There were a lot of first time filers, so people in their 40s or 50s or 60s who had never filed for unemployment insurance before. Um, and you know th this particular state didn't have a great portal to give a lot of information out to uh, to people. So what did they do? They pick they picked up the phone and called. Right? They wanted to know how do I do this? I want to never done this before. You know they they really needed that kind of white glove service to walk them through. Um, and, and, and this DOL didn't have enough people to begin with, and that was a different problem. Um, but one of the basic problems they had is their, their contact center software could only handle 30 callers at once. So if, if you were caller number 31, you just got disconnected. Uh, There's no dial tone, no bad jazz, just like a hard disconnect. And there were hundreds of thousands of caller number 31s. Um, and so, what they what they found is that when uh, they moved over to modern contact center solution, suddenly they could scale and they could make a decision about what kind of experience do they want to provide. You know, they, they still didn't have enough people to take on hundreds of thousands of people a day. You know, they, they weren't going to have that many people on the other end of the phone line, but they could at least very quickly, like in a few weeks, configure a solution that could handle as many people as they wanted to have waiting, waiting. And could do things like, hey, if, if our queue depth gets to be this this uh, this much, we'll give them a message that we're going to call them back. And by the way, log their phone number, put it into our, our contact center solution, put it into our service center solution, so that instead of waiting for them to call the next day and forcing them to call, we're going to call them back. And in fact, you know, even just ask them when they want us to call them back. And we'll transcribe that voice into a text record, put that into the database so that as we're organizing work for the rest of the week, we know that, you know, well, Chris wants to be called back at, you know, between noon and 5 p.m. tomorrow. Okay, we can do that. It allows them to actively manage the work and get really, really efficient with their people. So it, it really does transform 
you know, a contact center from a very kind of passive intake engine to something that could be much more active. What would be a first step for an organization who wants to modernize their contact center and, um, and, and don't really know where to start? And someone counterintuitively coming from a, a lifelong technologist, start with the people. Um, with, with modern cloud platforms, the, the technology is often the easy part. Um, it, it, these systems don't cost millions and millions of dollars to put in anymore. They, they used to, even a few years ago, they used to. Um, and they really just don't now. <laughs> what I think people really should concentrate on is what do they want the experience to be like for your customers and for your employees, by the way. And, and don't forget about the employee experience. Um, you know, I don't know if you've seen that ad on TV, you know, ha- happy cows make happy cheese. It's kind of true. <laughs> Um, you know, and so if you think about what kind of what kind of experience do you want your employees to have in terms of how they're using the contact center to serve their customers, you can make some great customer experiences. You know, I mean, how much better is, is it than you know, having a system tell you that you know, you're you're caller number 853 in line versus, hey, would you like us to call you back tomorrow? And then just getting a call back. Um, you know, so having people on your team who really understand kind of modern experience design uh, practices is really, really valuable and, and can't be understated. Um, experience design is a skill set that's kind of in short supply right now. It's, um, I, I think a lot of organizations realize that it's valuable, but it, it's hard to find people that really do it for a living. Um, they're absolutely worth waiting for. And a lot of organizations are building that capability, um, but they're absolutely fantastic. And it is a, it is a really different way of delivering technology um, that I think makes a big difference in people. In, in, in terms of how that technology creates a good experience for end customers and people. Thanks, Chris. Um, how can someone uh, contact you if they wanted to learn more? Yeah, thanks, Jessica. Uh, if they want to learn more, contact us at sales at slalom.com. Great. Thank you so much. Thanks so much for watching.